He was known simply as the boss. Yankees owner George Steinbrenner dead at age two, at age two, age 80, age two, what am I talking about? Here now with Dava Mori, Yankees uh, beat writer many, many years ago, New York baseball writer, good to have you here. An iconic sports figure yeah. passes. Your thoughts on the boss? Well, you know, he uh, passes the test of greatness and that he made a difference. You know, he changed, uh, he changed the game. He changed the way the game was presented, uh, the way it was run. And, uh, you know, as we talked about this the other day, um, you know, when he, first bought, when he first bought the Yankees, they had to pay to get their games on TV. Mm. And when he, when he passed away, they owned the network. So <laughs> it, it, just, it just shows you... Good businessman, right? It, what a good businessman he was. People forgot he was a shipbuilder, right? Yeah. And bought the Yankees with a team for ten million dollars some forty it, years it was ago, even right? Le- it was even less than that because he, there was a parking lot included in the deal that he sold back to the city. <laughs> so it was actually eight point eight million dollars. And according to the recent book on, on George, he actually put up one hundred and sixty-two thousand of his own money. Wow, that's something. And even conservatively, uh, if he had sold the team, he could have gotten a billion and a half. Right, a billion and a half so dollars. It was, uh, not a bad investment over not a bad. forty years, right? And you know, and that's why other owners, no matter what you may think, have nothing but gratitude for for him and what he meant to the brand names involved. You know, George W. Bush and his group bought the Texas Rangers in nineteen eighty nine for I believe about eighty million dollars. They sold them ten years later for two hundred and fifty million dollars. And it's gonna change hands again and I'm sure it's doubled or tripled again mm-hmm. in value. So even even these small franchises that, that people believe were hurt by Steinbrenner, the value of those franchises has doubled and tripled even over five or ten years. He was the guy people love to hate right now. Yeah. Now these past you can see a lot of sort of revisionist history but George Steinbrenner was also a, a cruel guy. He could be very generous, but he also could be very cruel, very rude. Yes, right? This he was could. a guy. This yes, was a guy could. who couldn't. Uh, he was a bad guy at many points during his, his career. Talk about that. Well, he was a difficult guy. He mm-hmm. was certainly difficult to work for, uh, and people, you know. But what people found was if they stood up to him, that he tended to respect that, and and those were the people that tended to last. If you kind of cowered or you couldn't take it, you know, you didn't last. But the one thing that George did uh, was he knew that people were, were hooked on being associated with the Yankees. Right, on winning. And, on yes, winning, right. But on being part of the Yankees. And he, would always, he could always hold that Yankee thing over their heads. And, and that's what you know, Billy Martin and a few others particularly kind of fell victim to that, that, mm. that they, were so, they were so desperate to be associated with the Yankees that, that George could, offend, uh, uh, could control them. Well, the thing, too, he wasn't afraid to pay you. He also loved the Yankees. Well, he was demanding, right. but then he paid you top dollars, but he expected you to perform yes. to that top and, dollar. And, right? and also, for paying you, he kind of believed that he then had the right to, right. to abuse you to, because he was paying you. To bad you, right? To, right, exactly. But, yeah, he, he, was, he, he was a difficult guy, but he was, he, was, he was a complex guy in that he could turn around at any moment and then do something incredibly kind and generous and not want anyone to know about it. So, you know, he, uh, like most of us, you know, he had his, his good and bad points. His dark side, right? Yes. Now, as far as if you're a Yankee fan, you have to like a guy who's willing to go out there and spend money, right? With all the pros and cons of Steinbrenner, the one thing he would do is go out there and spend his money on talent. And that's what every fan really wants, is that an owner who will say, hey, we gotta, we're going to improve the team, and money is no object. Right, and I think what you've seen with the Yankees in recent years, and certainly since he came back, is that with, a little bit, with just a little bit more stability, to run, to, to function with all those resources, it made the Yankees the dominant team. Now, earlier on, all that spending did nothing because he ran such a chaotic organization mm. that he defeated himself. He fired with 15 managers in yeah, 20 years, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and it was just so chaotic and disorganized that they couldn't win. But when he was able to let those resources start to, to take mm-hmm. effect, and it, it was that much better. And in the last couple of years, with his sons mm-hmm. running it, the organization is much more efficient, although less fun, and, and, but now they're spending their money wisely. And if they spend all that money wisely, then, then you've got to look out. Do they have the same business acumen as their dad or different? I think in some ways they're better because I think they're, they're more willing. Hal and... Uh... Yeah, it's primarily Hal. Mm-hmm. I think in some ways they're better because they're willing to let baseball people do their job, which, which their father was not. Mm-hmm. But, but I think George better understood the showman aspect the, of, of putting on, of having stars, of having a franchise that was a brand as mm. opposed to a franchise, and what it took to compete for the entertainment dollar in New York. You know, George knew how to put on a show. 
I don't think his sons will ever have that kind of pizzazz. You know, they're much more coldly efficient. You know, and, and the, probably the best way, and this, and this would, would translate all the way down the line, George would fire people, but they almost always came back. Mm. You know, he'd almost always give them a second, third, fourth chance. Impetuous, but then he was always right. uh, compassionate. I believe that his son, is, his son is more the type of guy who, once he fires you, you stay You're fired. Yeah. <laughs> all right, yet basically two iconic figures die in a span of days for the Yankees. Bob Shepard, the legendary voice. Yeah. Bob Shepard, number two, Derek <laughs> Jeter. Yeah. Yeah. Your thoughts. 99 years old. Yeah. Give me your Bob Shepard uh, boy, impersonation. He, he I think was, a good one. Give, uh, give me your Shepard. Well, you know, the thing with Bob is he, he, he talked in, in personal conversation exactly the way he talked on the mic. Very precise, right? Exactly the same way. Uh, so I, think I, have, I think we may have. Do we have sound on that, Chris? You might. No, we don't. Okay. We have to, okay. You have to do your imitation. Okay. But, no, he, I remember going up to him once asking him for an interview in the dining room. And he said, uh, Mr. Amore... I prefer not to be interviewed while I eat. <laughs> However, if you will come to my booth after the first inning, I will give you all the time you need. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the voice of God, right? He's the voice of God. He, he, he was one of a kind. You know, he, um, uh, he, he just, uh, you know, when, if, if you're old enough to remember the original stadium, and, and I was very young when I was there, but when it had that, that facade all the way around it, you know, that copper facade, mm -hmm. and you walked in, and that voice ringing down from that. It really, you know, the, that's where the cathedral word kind of comes associated with the stadium. Real quick, quick hits. Yankees, half of the season now, one thing to watch for. One thing for the Yanks. One thing, uh, pitchers being healthy. All right, Sox, one thing to watch for. Getting players back before it's too late. The Mets, my team, one thing to watch for for the Mets coming in this year. Uh, making, making a good trade for a, a big-time starter by the deadline. And Carlos Beltran is back for the exit. All right. Well, I'll tell you, Angel Pagan's not a bad player. He's right. your fourth outfield. It's a good team. All right, Dom, we got to have you back. Give him the hard rap sign, Dom. we got to have you back. When we come back, our entertainment attorney, James Walker, will talk about the latest troubles with Mel Gibson, the legacy of Larry King, and the other king, King James, the very latest. Don't go away. Thank you.